Okay, good morning. We're going to start chapter two of Christ the Healer, F.F. Bosworth book. But before we actually read into chapter two, um, I need you to Google or look it up in your Bibles if you um, are already um, aware of where to read about Paul's thorn. So most everyone that's listening to this probably hasn't read or doesn't understand or know about Paul's thorn, but I need you to go read it on your own. Um, if you want me to, um, you know, read it out loud in a short, quick video, then you can message me about that and ask me to do that because you know that I don't respond to messages and I delete all messages or comments. On, at the end of any of the videos that have anything to do with this book unless I have discussed that you should leave a comment which is really just a, a request for me to read you know a certain book of the Bible um, the Holy Bible and I will only be reading out of the King James Version or the New King James Version um, with regards to giving you answers okay so if you have been taught because um, chapter 2 is let me step back chapter two here is about did Jesus redeem us from our diseases when he atoned for our sins okay we shouldn't be having to be religious on any subject because the Holy Bible is just the Holy Bible period let's just stick with the King James and the New King James versions um, for scholarly things or maybe the NASB um, for scholarly um, truths um, I don't read Hebrew or Greek or Aramaic, so that's where we are with that. So I need you to read Paul's Throne or listen to it, you know, on Google or something before you listen to the rest of this book. So anyway, before we can answer, did Jesus redeem us from our diseases when he atoned for our sins? Um, from the word of God, I just invite you your attention to a few facts taught in the scriptures which bear on this subject. The scriptures declare in the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 12 that by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. Here it is plainly stated that death entered the world by sin. Therefore it is clear that disease which is incipient death entered into the world by sin. Now since disease entered by sin its true remedy must be found in the redemption of Christ. Since the oppression of the devil, chapter 10, verse 38 in the book of Acts. That's the book of Acts, chapter 10, verse 38. What power, when nature fails, can remove it but the power of the Son of God? As soon as disease has advanced beyond the power of nature to recover us, it will result in death in every case unless removed by the power of God. This all honest physicians will admit for thy claim only the power to assist nature not to heal in this event anything that would hinder the power of God thus supplementing nature would make recovery impossible accordingly James says confess your faults one to another that ye may be healed meaning that otherwise ye cannot be healed when disease has advanced beyond the power of nature Neither nature nor the physician nor even prayer can save the sufferer until he confesses his sins, unless God, for some sovereign purpose of his own, removes the disease. Since disease is a part of the curse, its true remedy must be the cross. For who can remove the curse but God? And how can God justly do it except by substitution? The Bible teaches, as one writer puts it, that disease is the physical penalty of iniquity, but that Christ has borne in his body all our uh, physical liabilities on account of sin, and that therefore our bodies are released judicially from disease. Through Christ's redemption, we may all have, as a part of the earnest of our inheritance, the life also of Jesus, made manifest in our mortal flesh to supplement nature until our work is finished in the same way that we may receive the first fruits of our spiritual salvation we can receive the first fruits of our physical salvation now to the question did jesus 
redeem us from our diseases when he atoned for our sins. If, as some teach, healing is not in the atonement, why were types of the atonement given in connection with bodily healing throughout the Old Testament? In the 12th chapter of Exodus, why were the Israelites required to eat the flesh of the Passover lamb for physical strength? Unless we can receive physical strength, our strength from Christ, who, Paul says, is our Passover sacrificed for us. 765 years after the institution of the Passover, we read in 2 Chronicles 30th chapter, 20th verse, that the Lord hearkened to Hezekiah and healed the people when they kept the Passover. That's what happened. Accordingly, Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 30 speaks of the failure of the Corinthians to rightly estimate the body. You can check out Weymouth's translation of some of this of Christ our Passover as the reason why many among them were weak and sickly. The Lord's Supper is more than an ordinance because we may partake of Christ while we are partaking of the emblems of his death and the benefits thereof. In Christ there is both bodily and spiritual life, and surely there is no better time for availing ourselves of the privilege of having the life also of Jesus may manifest in our mortal flesh. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. You can pause this video now to go back and write down those scripture references or whatever you need to do. Okay, this next section, healing taught in Old Testament types. Again, in the book of Leviticus, that's in the beginning part of the Bible. Chapter 14, verse 18. We read of the priest making atonement for the cleansing of the leper. Why an atonement for the leper's healing is if healing for us is not the atonement of Christ. The types in Leviticus 14th and 15th chapters shows us that it is or that it was invariably through atonement that sickness was healed. This to our mind is a complete answer to the question we are discussing. Should we go no further? Because all of these typical atonements point to and prefigure Calvary. Oh, did you know that? Keep listening. Again, Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 4 verse 19 that we, or I mean, he was anointed to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, referring to the Old Testament year of Jubilee. This shows us that the year of Jubilee is strikingly typical of gospel blessings. For here he himself applies the year of Jubilee to the gospel era. Leviticus chapter 25 verse 9 shows us that no blessing of the year of Jubilee was to be announced by the sounding of the trumpet until the Day of Atonement. On this day, a bullock was slain as a sin offering and the mercy seat sprinkled with blood. No mercy was offered until the blood of atonement sprinkled the mercy seat. Because it would be a judgment seat if not sprinkled with blood. This teaches us that no mercy or blessing of the gospel is offered to us irrespective of Christ's atonement. Okay, this next section is called Recovery of All Lost in the Fall. Through the fall we lost everything. Jesus recovered all through his atonement. Actually, I'm going to stop right there and restart with this section called Recovery of All Lost in the Fall in the next video because we're already hitting almost 10 minutes.